story, 42 miles. I'm going to start with the introduction so you kind of know what's going on. I want you to really listen to the story. I want you to think about the characters and the setting. You can fill out your graphic organizers as you go, or you can do it afterwards. Just 42 miles. That's how far it is from the downtown apartment where Jo Ellen lives with her mom to the old family farm where she spends weekends with her dad. But to her, these two homes are worlds apart. In the city, she's Ellen, who hangs out with her girlfriends, plays the sax, and loves old movies. In the country, she's Joey, who rides horses with her cousin, Hayden, goes fishing, and listens to bluegrass. Now with her 13th birthday approaching, she needs to decide, where do her loyalties lie? Who is the real Joe Ellen? This, this story is called a free verse literature. Does anybody know what free verse is? What is it? True story? True story? Could be. Kind of like your open mind. <gasps> kind of like your open mind. What free verse poetry and literature is, is it doesn't rhyme, it doesn't follow a pattern or anything. It, the rhythm of the story is, or the free verse is just like I was talking to you. That's how it would sound and look. I'll just show you the page. See how it looks like it's in poetry form? This is titled Changes. Until this year, my parents lived four blocks apart in Cincinnati. Until this year, I went to Liberty Elementary. Until this year, I was average height. I had clear skin and didn't need glasses to see the blackboard. Everything was easier until this year. Think about what kind of things are happening in her life. What is happening to Jo Ellen? This one's titled, Bargains. I look just like mom, hazel eyes, straight brown hair. Even my dimples match hers. But I'm long and lean like dad. The fifth generation Courtney kid to weave around the apple orchard on this rolling Ohio farm. The story goes that mom and dad couldn't agree on a name. A lot else, I guess, since they divorced when I was in diapers. So I got half of dad's name, Joseph, and part of mom's name too, Eleanor. But no one calls me by my real name, Joe Ellen. Mom and my city friends call me Ellen. And to dad and his family, I've always been Joey. Now my day is divided between them, as different as many names. Who's the main character in this story? Joe Ellen. How many names does Joe Ellen have? Two. Two? This one is titled Friday Nights. <coughs> Mom hovers in the doorway as I stuff my backpack with homework and music. Don't need clothes. There are plenty of worn ones tucked in the painted dresser under the attic eaves at Dad's house. No sleeping over with Annie and Tamika. Try to have fun in hip town, they say. No long Saturday afternoons spent planning outfits, comparing quizzes and team magazines, painting each other's nails the same shade of glittery green. On the drive to the farm, quiet falls like the darkness, the closer we get to Dad. Soon I'll climb out of Mom's crumbless black sedan, and she'll call from the cracked open window. See you Sunday, Ellen. I'll walk in the house without knocking, and Dad will be standing over the sink eating one of his odd concoctions, meatball tacos or eggplant pizza. I tried to wait for you, Joey, he'll say between bites. Then he'll hand me a plate and my other life will begin. Who is Annie and Tamika? Courtney. City friends. City friends? What happens on Friday nights? Jason. She like compares quizzes. Friday nights? 
Mondays. Mondays, if I were a teacher, I wouldn't stand behind a table or lecture at my wooden desk. And I would never talk behind my hand to another teacher. I let all the kids who did their best on 30 word vocabulary tests, even if it was a C, pull their homework pass or have 10 minutes longer for lunch. Who would like 10 minutes longer for lunch? I'm sure Mr. Harper would. Books would be sprinkled over every spare space, even hung from the ceiling on a string. I could pluck one to read aloud at odd times all day. Homework would be optional, where park cards wouldn't exist, not to mention in-school suspension or after-school detention for talking. When Spring finally packed away her winter coat, I pulled every class under the ancient elm. Who could finally hear the lessons he'd only spied on before from the seat outside the dirty windows? What do you think she's describing right there? Was it? When she grows up. When she grows up? Anthony? How do you think she feels about school? nearly an hour to get from the blue door decorated with Grant's grapevine wreath to the steel gray one marked by iron numbers and a peephole. Pinned in the small cage of his faded red pickup, Dad shares more words with me than he does in the rest of the hours together combined. With every mile, the landscape changes. Trees and fields morph into a tall city building. Winding country road into six-lane highway. And Joey transforms into Ellen, though no one notices but me. What do you think is happening here in the story? Evan? Having a problem. She's having a problem? What problem is she having? Some six on that? Do you think she's going from her country life back to her city life, maybe? And then her city life to country life? Mm -hmm. So she's she lives two different lives, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. This one's called the news. In a basket next to a microwave that used to only pop popcorn, Mom keeps takeout menu for every restaurant in 10 block radius. She has a favorite at each one. Fried dumplings from JoJo's China Bistro. Cheese enchiladas from El Loro. Five-way chili from Skyline. But I try something new each time we order. Even if I learn that curry nauseates me and that my minestrone is really just vegetable soup, at least my tongue's not bored. We eat slumped over TV trays, spilling details from our days and rating the sizzling fashion and trends from the Hollywood Tonight Show. That, when I was little, I call the news. What do you guys think about when I say the news? The weather. The weather. Or the channels. The channels that I don't like to watch. The channels you don't like to watch? Information. I think about when she says news, I'm thinking the TV shows, the, what comes on late night, everybody the tries to find out what's going channel, on. The news channel. I think about the newspaper. The news channel. Here, news. her type of news is all different, isn't it? It's not what we really think it is. This one's titled Rules. Homework before TV, no R-rated movies. Lights out by 10, no pets allowed in. Fresh fruit snack, don't ever talk back. With mom, it's all about rules. This one's titled, Just Chaos. When dad lived in the city, his place was always piled with newspapers, magazines, and books, with unopened bills and bookmarks. I can tell he's trying to be neater, living in his parents' house, can he hear Graham nagging in his head? 
but he'll let me sleep wherever I drop, on the couch, on the porch, or even in the hayloft. I've never had a bedtime or curfew. I can watch whatever the TV will tune into, read any book on the shelf. We might eat at six standing by the sink or at 10 sitting at the table. With dad, one thing's for certain, nothing ever is. Can you, can you start to see the two different worlds that she lives in? What kind of, what kind of life do you think she has with mom? A boring one. You think it's boring? Yes. Dad, I'm like crimson, all of you grounded. What about dad? Awesome, I'll awesome. Love that one. Awesome. It's kind of carefree, just lay back. I just lay back. I sleep on some old rotten newspapers. Yeah. Like yeah. a doggy. Oh, yeah. This one is Tyler. Tyler's book tile. This one is titled Bookmobile. <laughs> Each Saturday, when dad closes up shop in the old barn, he calls for me as if dinner is served. Joey, Bookmobile. <laughs> Then we hike the half mile trail to His Holiness Abounds Pentecostal Church, where the library on wheels parks. We pretend we're modern pioneers in search of provisions, and we are. Dad only owns a tiny TV. There's no cable service or DVD player, and the VCR has been broken forever. After we turn home, Dad and I invent a new recipe using ingredients from the garden, or from jars stored in the dusty shelves in the basement. We evaluate our creation, then we stretch out on the couch, our feet sharing the ugly afghan in the middle, matching lamps glow over our heads, and we disappear into dreams of different worlds. Do you think Dad's is still pretty awesome? He has a tiny TV, yes. no VCR or DVD. Yeah. Oh, watch TV. Me neither. You don't watch TV? No. I watch TV on My little brother broke my Xbox. I know. So what's the point of that? What is a bookmobile? It's a portable book. A portable book? Yeah. A portable mm -hmm. bookshelf? Yeah. There's a bookshelf on wheels that you just put yeah. down everywhere? Yes, yes. It's it's like you it's like this big bookshelf that you get inside and it's like a truck. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, a but yeah, it's van also, or like a bus where you can go get books and things like a library. But, but yeah, it's also a boat. You think so? Yes. This one's titled Movie Night. Awesome. On Thursdays at 6, Mom and I meet under the antique marquee of the Commodore Theater. The lobby is full of faded, mismatched furniture. There's a place in the carpet that's so worn it looks like straight knee. And the gold tassels at the bottom of the red velvet curtain seem to unravel a bit more each week. But I like this tattered elegance. We watch old black and white classics subtitled art flicks and third run features. We share a large tub of popcorn bag of red licorice and a giant diet pop and call it dinner. <laughs> Mom might annoy me with her nagging. Ellen, did you remember? There's always this Thursday night truce waiting for us in front of the flickering screen. Do you think Mom cooks much? No. Do you think they eat out a lot? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think Mom, Mom's a little bit fun. You think Mom's a little bit fun? They get to go to movies, don't they? Yeah, that's fun. There's something called uh, Netflix. Mm. I'm going to read these two. One's called Farm Nights and one's Cinc Cincinnati Nights. The apple trees share secrets. The ducks endlessly discuss the quality of rain. A freight train moans its lonely call. Whoever thinks it's quiet in the country has never slept here before. Cincinnati Nights. Through my open window, the street light, my night light. An ambulance wailing, car cussing, cats calling, dogs delivering the news. My city lullaby. This one's titled Fine. <laughs> each week, Mom and Dad ask ever so politely about each other. I've learned over the years that only answer they really want to hear is a mumbled, fine, just fine. I never tell Mom I love to cook with Dad, inventing new dishes, tossing ingredients into the sizzling olive oil, then discussing our creations as we devour them. And I never describe for Dad Mom's modern apartment, her splashy use of color, and funky fabrics. How we're always rearranging rooms and evaluating our designs. Mom doesn't see Joey, Dad rarely meets Ellen, and no one ever asks if that's fine. Just fine with me. How do you think she feels about these two worlds? <laughs> 